Welcome to Sam Vickers Golf Performance Educational Series on Physical Preparation and the Gas Model. So what is the true purpose of training? When we train or exercise, we stress our bodies to a level that is naturally higher than its resting state. Typically, when most people think of exercise, they perceive the stress experience needs to be hard or unpleasant to be effective. The old no pain, no gain principle is often thought of. However, this approach is unfounded and is not the case when we are talking about a stimulus to training adaptation. Training effectively must be about the outcome being to improve the physical quality we desire. So whether that's to improve cardiovascular health to find walking nine holes less demanding or to improve club head speed in golf, the training input and strategy must match the desired outcome. What happens physiologically when we exercise? When we exercise, the sole physical purpose is to, to disrupt homeostasis. Homeostasis is how the body regulates itself in order to maintain a consistent internal environment. An example would be something as simple as increasing our heart rate above normal resting state. If we apply sufficient stress to the body, body then there is a clear disturbance in homeostasis. As a result, the body will assess the amount of stress applied and act accordingly. This moves us on to the gas model. So general adaptation syndrome gas occurs when we affect homeostasis. This describes the response of an organism to stress. Strength conditioning coaches express the gas model into every training session and program designed. So therefore if the purpose of training effectively is to apply stress to stimulate a desirable adaptation then the objective is to increase the performance capability of an individual for their sport. So it's always really important to start with the end in mind. If gas is the desired outcome, then how can it be achieved effectively for the individual based on their goals, training experience, available time, injury history, and other lifestyle, stre lifestyle stresses? So phase one is the alarm phase. When we first start a new training program, the individual will experience a new stressor that causes an initial reduction in the tolerance of the individual to that specific stressor. This is when the homeostasis is disrupted. Physiologically, the body will increase heart rate, release a stress hormone called cortisol, and provide a boost of adrenaline. This is one of the reasons most people often feel better after exercising. Then the body moves into phase two, resistance. Once the individual becomes accustomed to the stress of the program, they become more resistant to its specific demands. This is where programming in the sweet spot, based on a number of factors mentioned earlier, becomes essential to a positive response. Consequently, the body will adapt positively to the stressor based on the type of training performed, causing a specific change in line with the program aims, such as increased power output, maximal strength or joint mobility. The individual can start to handle more of the stressor, such as heavy amounts of weight lifted, a lower rest period between sets, and or high volumes of reps, sets, or training sessions. This is where progression is often looked at in exercise programs week to week. Phase three is exhaustion. If the stressor is too high and constantly pushed from training session to session, program to program, with inadequate rest and recovery time, exhaustion occurs. So this is when the body exceeds the available energy to adapt positively. The cup becomes too full and starts to overflow. As a result, the body has too little time to recover from too much stress and will often get injured, ill or not improve the physical components required for the desired outcome, often regressing and not progressing. Furthermore, stressors outside of the training program can play a role in an individual reaching the exhaustion phase. This could be other sport activities for an elite golfer like practicing volume, traveling multiple rounds consecutively and mental fatigue. Whereas for the weekend recreational golfer, the above still applies, but daily work and family commitments, often nutrition is not as good and sleep are likely to be bigger stressors, all impacting how the body adapts. So obviously we're looking for optimal stress input, but too little applies then the body doesn't adapt. 
the alarm phase is essentially not reached. This can often be the case when golfers spend the majority of their time stretching, foam rolling and performing body weight core exercises. However, too much stress, then the body cannot adapt efficiently. Exhaustion phase. This can often be the case when individuals try to push every training session to the limit through high reps, low rest period, high amount of kilograms lifted most days of the week, working a 10 out of 10 all the time. This is also known as overtraining syndrome. So why is rest and recovery essential to effective training? In order for an individual to achieve positive adaptations, it is important to understand that physiological adaptation only occurs after the application of the training stress. Therefore, achieving adequate recovery between sessions is paramount. Either by training multiple days in a row regularly or not training consistent enough between sessions, this will tip the outcome out of the sweet spot. Too high, too low. So key questions to ask yourself based on the information highlighted today. How do I want my training to help my golf, both directly and indirectly? Things like more club head speed and feel generally fitter to feel less fatigued from playing. What's needed? What are my training aims? What do I need to do to improve the physical capabilities highlighted in question one? Then ask yourself, are you currently applying the most effective strategies at the moment? And if not, using the information learned today, identify what could be improved. Once all of that is highlighted, then it's the case of simply applying and moving forward. Thank you for listening on Physical Preparation Gas Model.